Welcome to the hair show, the hottest, the biggest hair show on the planet. I'm Ursula Steven. And I'm Kia Marie. And guys, this show is about to take you on the ultimate hair journey. Today, we have a pretty dope guest today. She's talented. She's an entrepreneur. She's a reality star. She's a philanthropist. She just keep adding to the list. Yes, Let's welcome to Harry. Hey, hey, girl. Welcome. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you for having Enjoying me. Enjoying your summer? Absolutely. How Not are you? out here. It is very, very hot, and I'm so happy that you decided to cool down with us yes. in the studio Brave. today. Yes. I see, yes. I see. Okay, twin, twin I, moment. You know, hey. So speaking of hot. <laughs> Great minds. Yes. Today's hot hair topic is healthy hair regimen. Right. Are you girls being healthy? Hmm. Mm, I think I'm about an A minus. Mm, I'm more natural now, so yes, I'm focused. Yes. Okay, so now you think yeah. you're A because you're natural? <laughs> no, I'm just saying I'm focused. You, okay. You're going to get me to the A. Okay, I got you. <laughs> So first up, we're gonna talk about trimming and how often you should trim. Now, me personally, I trim about once every three months. Now, is that too three much? Three months? Am I doing too much? No, actually, you're, pre you're pretty good. You're natural, so okay. we'll, we'll get into that. So, all right, so let's talk about trims. Trims, first of all, as a professional, we always tell our clients to trim their hair at least four to six weeks. But that was a long time before the natural hair movement, mm -hmm. right? A lot of girls were wearing relaxers, so if you were going in to get your relaxer done every like four to six weeks, we recommend you getting a trim because your hair needs to be maintained at the, you know, at the ends of the hair. But now that the, the uh, natural hair movement has gotten so big, girls are not trimming as often because they really don't need to, but you still need to trim even though you are natural. With that said, everybody's hair growth pattern is totally different. Your hair may grow quicker than mine, mm -hmm. yours may grow quicker than hers. So you have to kind of really look at it to monitor when you should get your hair trimmed. But it is definitely mandatory that you get your hair trimmed anytime between one to three months. I guess I can okay? relate to that because I went from relaxing my hair my whole life since I was like maybe six. My grandmother killed my natural waves. Right. And I didn't know any better, so I would definitely trim them every time I got a relaxer, which yeah. is every three months for okay. me. Okay but my hair always grew very fast. And now that I'm natural, and I've been on this journey for about four years, I definitely trim not as often, but I don't need to because I'm taking better care of my hair. Okay, I'll I give used you to that. be into the whole yeah. Yeah, end right, stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> that was my stress reliever and just picking <laughs> right. on up. Wait, so do you guys understand the whole split end theory? No. Okay, Please so explain. this is what happens with split end. So you have a strand of hair, right? So imagine my hands are hey, one strand of hair, right? <laughs> And what happens with split ends is that they start splitting at the bottom right. and they split all the way down. So if you don't catch it soon enough, what will happen is that that end will split all the way down and this will break away. Right. And because this is too thin to, or not strong enough to stand on its own, this will break away. So this is why we stress getting trims on time because if you don't, you will always end up with breakage. This whole natural stuff is so much better because, yeah. like I said, I'm healthier, so right. I don't really have to deal with it. Now, you know, DIY is like all the craze. Like, everybody is getting into at-home treatment. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. trimming, is that something that you can do yourself? Absolutely not. Please leave trimming to the professionals or else you will end up with the salt and pepper. Yeah, <laughs> all right? That was so a sound please, thing, though. I mean, I know it was a trend, but yes. you know what I mean. Please, I think trimming is definitely something that you should leave to the professional. I sure. agree, I yeah. agree. Unless you're like into it, though. Unless you're like a pro pro. Like my sister's good on hair, she's good with makeup, she's good with nails, so she does her own stuff. I'm so not good at it, I'm gonna leave it up to the professional. Yeah. yeah. If you're an octopus and you could <laughs> do all that, then have fun, with, yeah. have fun with it. Speaking of natural hair movement, mm -hmm. with the natural hair movement came Co-washing. Yes. Can we talk a little bit about co-washing versus washing? Uh -oh. Do you agree? Are you here for it? To hear your faces what all you think? What's happening like, over there? What's co-washing? Is it that I got a partner? He's going to come and co and help me <laughs> wash? Is it that I'm washing half of something? Like conditioner wash. Yes. Co stands for conditioner. So you're only washing with yes. conditioner. But then you're not washing. So that's the, all right, so back to the natural hair movement. So let's go back to co-washing. So co-washing, the definition of co-washing is solely washing your hair with conditioner. And this became very popular with the natural hair movement because as we know, natural hair girls or textured hair women, our hair is naturally dry. So we're trying to keep the moisture in. So before, you know, we, you know, got, you know, smart with all the new products that we have now, we, we kind of got afraid of the shampoos because they were a little stripping. Mm -hmm. So this is why natural hair girls got into the whole co-washing thing to keep the moisture in. So I think, don't get nervous here. She's like, ooh, she, oh. I'm like ready to be like, no. So like I think the, the great balance for 
co-washing is to co-wash mm -hmm. for a good two weeks if you want to keep the moisture in and then do a real serious deep wash at your third week if you're a real co-wash I mean, but there's shampoos that exist that are sulfur-free, a lot of better shampoos out there for hair that doesn't strip your hair, but co-washing is like, am I going to wash <laughs> half of my butt cheek? Like, am I going to no, half, please am I gonna don't, go half please. armpit co-wash? No. Like, who does that? Don't wash half your butt cheek. Please, don't do that. <laughs> please don't. <laughs> I'm just saying co-wash. You're either going to wash or you're not going to wash. I agree. I agree. I have to say that I did get into the whole co-washing thing when I first went natural, but okay. now i just been really diligent about making sure my scalp is clean Good. because I know a healthy scalp Good. leads to healthy hair growth. Yeah. So I wash my hair every week with a moisturizing shampoo. Mm -hmm. So can you talk more about moisturizing shampoos and what is the best avenue to go when choosing a shampoo? Well, I think that's what it is, is that we have a lot more knowledge now. You know, the natural hair movement, what, it was 20, I think 15, 2013, maybe? That was like peak. Yeah, peak that was the hair. peak. So we didn't have that much knowledge and it was such a new thing to us. We didn't understand our own hair, you know? So now we're approaching 2020 and we have a lot better products that, you know, mm -hmm assist in moisturizing and detangling so I think detangling so I think it's really about finding the best moisturizing shampoos and conditioning shampoos and looking for those cre those key ingredients like coconut oil yes. and avocado oil those are softening and penetrating so we're smarter now so we don't yeah. have to co wash your scalp. definitely yeah, agree nobody's yeah, co washing over here baby it's so either wait, all or nothing so do you girls know the difference between deep conditioners and hair masks I use them both. No, I thought they was the same thing, not the same thing. No, no they're not. Isn't one step goes before the other or vice versa? Okay, so. You gotta get, you, <laughs> like, my whole world is changing okay. right now. What's the difference? So, <laughs> I call hair masks the 911 of treatments. Okay. So if you're going through like a crazy breakage and your hair is breaking off and you're dry and super damaged, you want to really run to a hair mask and it's a lot more extensive and a lot more penetrating and you leave it on longer. A deep conditioner, you kind of, you can run it through the hair right after your shampoo and conditioner and you can leave it on for five minutes. And that's good for like maintaining okay. moisturized hair. But if you're really going through a hair problem and you really want to get treated, hair mask is your thing. Is that okay. something you have to see a professional for? You don't have to see a professional for one. You can find a great one and maintain it. Because I always feel like even if you have a great hairstylist and she has great products, it's always good to find your great consumer worthy product to kind of continue the love at home. Now, like for me, for instance, I went through a phase where I was getting highlights in my hair. Okay. Like, is there anything special you have to do when you get color or you have highlights in your hair when it comes to these masks or these deep, deep conditioners? Absolutely, you need to up your conditioners. So if you were doing it like once a month, right. you want to do it twice a month now, okay. you know? And you want to also go for products that are specific to hair color and your dry hair, things like that. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Let's talk about diffusers versus blow dryers. So diffusers mm. are something that you use when you're doing that wash and go. Yeah. Do you have anything else that you would use a diffuser for? A diffuser is really, so uh, the difference between a diffuser and blow drying is that the diffuser, it kind of condenses the heat. So when you have girls that are trying to go for the wash and go, but they don't want to walk out with their hair dripping wet and they want to really get some of that, that the water out mm -hmm. and really keep their curl without disrupting the curl, that's when you pull out your diffuser. So for your look, you'll definitely diffuse and it, it helps to shape the hair and dry the hair right. without shape. being too aggressive on your mm -hmm. curls. As a blow dryer, you actually really trying to blow dry the hair. You use it for like more blow styling, round brushing and things like that and really like concentrating dryness, you know? I had a situation where um, I'm, I'm now natural. Yeah. I didn't know I had a curl, I'm getting a curl. And then I went and got blow drying, a wash and blow. Mm -hmm. And it was so extensive, it killed some of my curls. So the next time I wet my hair, I had like strands, they were like, yeah. and I was like, oh, so my whole life, I've been killing my curls without even knowing with the yes. blow dryer. And it took that one time to realize, being natural, that I actually had some kind of curl. Yes, so you want to definitely stick to using a diffuser. Awesome. And as you do it, you want to scrunch up like that, you know, to push your curl into it. You know. I think every girl with curly hair does that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's like push it up. Shape it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that wraps up our hair hot topics. Now, time for some tea, Tahiri. Ooh. What I do? We want to hear your, about your hair story, all about this look. We love in the cornrows. Oh, oh, what man. inspired this look? Let's get into your story. Uh, well, the inspiration behind my look is why not? <laughs> cornrows, they've that. been around forever. Yes, high five it. Um, yes. Forever. I see you, girl. Uh, and um, it's it's just comfort. It's easy. Uh, it's, it's great for the gym. Yeah. And I mean, women are beautiful. Why not show the face? Yeah, and it's I actually think it, a big trend now. Like yeah, braids can, are it is, super yes. big right now. And it's you can put it. Mm -hmm, you can go on a red carpet as well yes. as you can go hang out, you know, with your girls or whatever the case is. But Tracy Ellis Ross 
is very big on her cornrows, yes. even on a red carpet. And so I just stopped putting in the hair and I'm all natural and I'm enjoying my summer. I love that because I think it's very empowering for yeah. girls to see just straight back. Usually we hide it under the wig, yeah. Yeah. but to see it just regular, no designs, just right. I think it's just very chic. Back. And then wearing with a gown just yeah. gives that juxtaposition. I love, I love it. Less is more sometimes. I hear right? it. What was the toughest part about going natural for you? Uh, trying to tame my hair. Um, Learning something new about me that really wasn't new. It was a true, yeah. what is the essence of Tahiri. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandmother relaxed my hair when I was a baby. They had these products called Milta de Perale. It was like these Spanish products and they were big in the Latin community. And she started to relax my hair. I believe I was like six. Okay. So I really never knew. And all I kept hearing at home was you have bad hair, bad mm -hmm. hair. So I grew hating my hair. Got it. Uh, and uh, as a teenager, I'd be at the beach or the pool, anywhere where any water could hit my hair, and I would run straight <laughs> to the brush and the, no, it was, I was frustrated. I, I, it was bad hair, bad yeah. and hair. Yeah. I wasn't pretty. My hair wasn't pretty. Right. Uh, so all these things used to always play in my head, and so I would. Uh, run right after the beach. Like, I didn't enjoy myself. Like, I'd dip in, come right. back out, pull it to the back, spray it. Shh. I was killing the ozone layer back then. Right. I, was just, <laughs> I was on that beach towel, like. Um, so my whole life, I have pictures of my hair slicked back. Wow. Uh, and so I just thought I had bad hair until uh, maybe four years ago, I went, started going natural. I stopped relaxing my hair finally. Okay. So I never really knew what my hair really looks like. Okay. Uh, and I was celebrating for my natural journey in a hair magazine. And I was like, look at God. Yes. I went from having bad hair to realizing there is no such thing as bad hair. And that, yeah. that parents sometimes, not sometimes, well, they have to understand that what they tell your, your children, yes. they have to be careful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta think it's a cultural thing. Yeah. You know, we so, permed our hair for survival. Yes. But the times have changed. We learn to embrace what yes. naturally comes out of our scalp. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful thing. So now to me, it's like, no, my hair is different. So my girl used to be like, I can't deal with this, the bad hair, and give me a lot of little buns and stuff and so I learned how to deal with my own hair that was the most yeah. difficult part uh, the sweating and it getting puffed up yeah. the not understanding after I washed it how it would stick together yeah. early on because it was trying to, yes it was <laughs> trying to figure its own way out and then I started to oil my scalp I didn't know what uh what do you uh, edge control was okay we use gel for everything <laughs> right, I, know. I like three years ago I was it's a like, wonderful what? world of product I right was like, what's edge control yeah. and it was like where have you been so with wow. that said how has your relationship with yourself changed with your nude, well, you know, natural first of hair. all, oh, wow. I called my grandmother to curse oh. out real quick. Like, <laughs> yes. you trying to kill me? Right. <laughs> what were you doing to me? I remember like two, three years ago for New Year's, I was laying my hair out and I had curls. Yes. Uh, so yeah, we had it out really quick. Mm -hmm. um, but she didn't know any better. Her hair was different. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Uh, and um, it's empowering, like you said. Uh, it's accepting of who I am, yeah. where I come from, what do I really look like. And I just felt like I couldn't be out here you know, telling my story if mm -hmm. I really didn't right. understand who I was and where I came from. So um, this is me. This is my hair. This love is, it. Love it or hate it. I this is me. It, <laughs> you know what I'm I saying? love that. Right. So, so it's been very empowering. And, it, and I'm comfortable. That's what That's it's about. What it's about being comfortable, comfortable in, your own skin. in your own skin. Absolutely. And loving, loving what you were yes. born with. Yes. Right. And it's all. I think it's always great to enhance your beauty and add yeah, wig, wig, whatever, but you have to still feel great right. Right. I without think the, all those things. The problem know? is we're wearing wigs to cover up what's underneath. Yeah. You know, if you're using it to switch styles, fine, but if you're using it because you don't like your hair, I think that's where the issue lies. Yeah, that's true. Did you ever choose a hairstyle over the health of your hair? Absolutely. <laughs> all the we all, I think we're all guilty, of, we all we're all guilty. guilty of that. I'm like this, well, here's the thing, because I didn't have a previous love to it, it's easier for me to say, hey, it'll grow back. So if right. it goes wrong, mm -hmm. then whatever. And then as a child, I grew up, my mom had the salt and pepper hair. And not because she made a mistake, because I was in, and mom had right. the, the red hair but up. She was on some little Kim wearing different <laughs> ponytails, right. according to the outfit. So I grew up on that. Yeah. So I remember finding the first excuse to wear weave was the, mm -hmm. the first time they gave me a bad haircut. I was oh, like, I oh, I and I weave. threw it in. Right. Yeah. And back then they would sew it and it would be bulky right. because they didn't do the, they yeah. didn't know how to sew it. Right. Right. So I've seen it all, been through it all. So I don't, I don't, I'm learning to love and take care of it. Yes. But at the same time, I also live on the edge. Mm -hmm. And some outfits do take for you to say, the hair, yeah. let's get this boldy. 20 yes. inches. I hear that. Yes. <laughs> Give me inches, girl. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the craziest style you ever tried? Craziest style? I don't think I've ever tried anything crazy. Oh, I think wow, that man. me, no, I think that me getting into wigs now 
feels a little crazy. But I've why, always played why? it safe okay. because I don't because I don't know much about it. So now I'm getting into the lace fronts and right. I don't want to no longer like put the in-betweens or okay. kill my hair with yes. the excess Heat. hair. Yeah. yeah, so now if I can protect my hair and braid it and throw on a wig, it's it's easy, it's faster. You know, I'm all into convenience. I'm yes. proud of so, you. Yeah. I am yes. learning. Yes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think that's the craziest thing. I had a wig on and uh, everybody has, ba they, they blend it in. Yeah. And my stylist hates baby hair and wigs. She's like, that's so ghetto. So she didn't give me any baby hair. <laughs> and I just felt like there was forehead and wig. Right. But then she's getting crazy hits about my wig. And I'm like, I'm confused. How does this <laughs> go? But oh I'm going right. to learn in front of the world. I love it. I, yeah, love so it. I'm just, I think that's the craziest for me mm -hmm. is trying the new style and then being judged by the world. Because even though you're comfortable in your own skin, mm. you read these comments and you're like, am I putting this wig yeah, I on know, right? I know, I right. know. I, love I think it. that's yeah. the biggest thing about wigs is, is it on right? Yes. Is, can you, what lace? Yes. That right, what, right. Yes. That, that terrifies me. That lace right there, girl. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I found out something interesting about what you. What I do? That, <laughs> That you are the oldest of 14 siblings. Yes, I am. Have you ever had to play hair, hairdresser? Uh, the, I'm not the hair girl. I'm not the hair okay. girl. I'm not the. I, I, I'm, more, I'm more of a numbers girl. So I've always okay. been out here trying to get it. You know, okay. saying survival of the fittest. Yeah. I will not go back to where I come from. Okay. But unless they give back, and if I had to, I would. But you know what I mean. I work really hard. Yeah. Um. But no. Uh. That's my the second. So we okay. we be like, hey, number seven, number two, oh, my little that. sister. Oh. My sister be like, call number 14. <laughs> um. <laughs> she's the one with that gift. Okay. The gift with the hair. She just did her full locks by herself oh, and wow. she it on YouTube and, and I she, love that. she plays with it. Um, I'm always out there trying to get it. So I, and I don't have I the patience. It. So right. no, I was never, so I'm hoping that God doesn't, well, if God blesses me with a little girl then, you, got you know, it's a blessing. It. <laughs> but I'm hoping to be the soccer mom so I can just get them haircuts and be like, yes. <laughs> What's I the hair it. trend that you haven't tried that you want to try? Oh man, the pink, the purple, the blue color yes. waves, the, the, all of that. Uh, all of that, yes, I'm just a little concerned about it. But yeah, I want to try a color. I want to try not crazy the regular, color. just a crazy color. Why haven't you tried it yet? I want to look like a Skittle. How, why haven't you tried it yet? Uh, because I think I'm too cool. Okay. Something about me, and I don't think it goes with my personality. Got it. That's honest. That's I don't, honest. I, I know who I am. I yeah. don't think it was my personality. Like, yeah. if I walk around with a pink wig on, they'd be like, so here are your wallet. Yeah. So do no, you think I get it's it. an age thing, too? Well, you know, that's it's, it's such a fine line. And, and age is nothing subject. but a number, boo. Right. right. See that? Yeah, to that tell a woman tell me, I just how no, she can I'm wear her hair, you know? You. I'm talking about you. No, in general. general. Yeah. Like, yeah. You nothing but a number. Hair, yeah. Or little girls. or That's the thing. I feel like that's a it's a very fine line when you when you try to tell a woman how she can wear her hair because she's not this age or whatever. Because, you know, hair is an expression expression of how you feel, right? It's so right. I might be 75 and I want to wear a top knot with baby hair. And I think hairs, that's fabulous. You know? But it has but to complement. you have to also be conscious that because it's an expression of mm -hmm. who you are and what you're trying but to say, you. that's how people will react that's to you. Good. So mm -hmm. if you want to be 75 with a hot pink wig on and a baby hair, then that's how they're going to talk to you. Honey. Right. So, so it's just about being I feel that. Yeah, I, I think that, um, I think it's not me, but I'll try it. Yeah. Uh, depending on the day where I'm going yeah. and what you're doing, I could yeah. be just yeah. shooting, you know. For sure. Or it could it's be important Halloween. to know what looks good on you. You know, you have to be, as a woman, I feel like you should know what looks yeah. good on you and what doesn't look good but, on you. But that's the only trend right now that I keep kind of like mm. thinking about it. Because I'm about to put a little pressure on you. You. It's not mm -hmm. too bad. Mm. I want to get your curl crush. Someone who either you admire their hair, you kind of wish secretly I had that type of curl. Okay. Or, well, you know. Of course, Tracy Ellis. Okay. Uh, I just live through her. It comes to fashion, hairstyles, and just her cornrows in general and how she's mm -hmm. able to work it on and off on a red carpet and just on her on the day she's being goofy on Instagram. Yeah. I think she's amazing. She's aging like wine. Uh, Sierra. Mm -hmm. She, I have, must have her on my board, my inspiration board, because I have boards. Okay. Uh, depending right. on what I'm doing, uh, so. every the, the two uh, love and hip hop uh, reunions, my hair was a little bit of um, CC and Riri. Okay. So, Ooh, I like that. So so Re, so so Rihanna and, and and Sierra are like who I look for in like color, and of course Beyonce. Who pulls? together finger waves and braids. Yes. Like, is it a wig? Is it a yes. weave? Like, we, we, what did you do and can I get one? Right. Where can I get one? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so Cece, Riri, I gave you four. Beyonce and Tracy Ellis. I just love. All right, we um, like those, we like those we, options. We definitely we like do. So tell us, any upcoming projects? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm living, I'm, I'm eat, loving, and praying. 
Uh, I'm currently just, you know, working on my acting and there might be some stuff coming on soon that is too early to discuss. Okay. But for right now, no. Um, just happy, single, and living life. Yes, I love that. Well, we look forward to seeing you on the big screen yeah. one of these days. Yes. Thank you for coming <laughs> Thank to The you Hair so much. Show. Thank you for having me. Yes, don't forget to hashtag The Hair Show, B-E-T, so you can be a part of this conversation because it's going to get hot. Yes, mm. and Tahiri, you definitely got to come back on the show when you get that colored hair. Oh, girl, I see we you waiting. next week. <laughs> Looking like a Skittle. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>